and this is Behind the Rack, your number one rugby podcast. Yes. Uh, and what do we have here? Exclusive. Our exclusive. Ever exclusive interview. What do we call it? Must you say um, episode 14.5? Huh. Hmm? Good question. Yeah, we'll think about that and we'll get back to that. Okay. Um, but yeah, exclusive episode four, Achiva. Graham. Diamani. Yes. Diamani. Diamani. Huh? Yes, so eh? we're super excited we have Achiva uh, on the show. Um, obviously, we look at us, we dress to impress, we and right he's man. a guy that's all about fashion. Yes, mm-hmm. hopefully, brought some swag, some glasses, some of you, course know, you, you know, you sometimes got a handbag, sometimes a crop toppy, whatever they call it these days, okay, okay. and the nails in the hair, and all those type of things. But it was super awesome, eh? To, to chat to him, you know, obviously, he's still a teammate of me, yes, of myself, and when I'm in the gym, when, he's, when I'm in the team, the stuff he talks about, his knowledge of, of the game, knowledge of the game, uh, you know, his experience. His story. His story, his I'm experience. Keen to hear his story. Yeah. It's going to be super, super awesome to, to find out and okay. how, what he thinks, what he believes and if, you know, he's a guy that stands for something and don't fall for anything. Oh, so, um, let's go. So, yeah. Up next, Achiva Here we go, eh? Let's go. The Let's man go. in the building, eh? Main Chivas, main. he's got his own song. As bright lights. Hiya, ha chiva, hiya. Ha chiva, hiya. Ha chiva, ha, ha, ha. It's the bright yes, lights. What's popping? Like, what's popping? Uh, nice. How are you doing, brother? You good? Yeah, I'm chilling, bro. What's popping? Uh, are you chill vibes? Chill vibes. I can see you looking chill, chill there, brother. Okay. Uh, flames. Coming with the baby blue. Is this straight from the training? Yeah, huh? you know the vibe. You know the vibe, you know what it is. <laughs> Achiva, man, fantastic to have you yeah. on Behind the Rack. It's awesome to have you. Obviously, it's been a while. I've been asking him for a couple of times. I always is ask it? my teammates for, you know, when, when is the time, eh? Huh? The show is Sometimes all... I worry about your data because huh? the boys don't reply Yeah, they to don't you. reply, eh? Okay. So I, I'm also wondering what's Sort it out. Yeah. Achiva, how's things? How's um, pre-season so far? Um, yeah, I know you just came back from George, played the first game against the Sharks. How's things? Yeah, man, you know... Things are good. Economy is bad. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we just keep going. Eh? Mm. I think pre-season was good. Um, the 10 weeks was very tough. Um, the, so much work has gone into training, um, trying to get back into shape. You know, um, just got married. Mm. So Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you very Changes much, Changes in my life. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, um, yeah, man. So... Um, the main focus, obviously, is to to make another final and win it. Mm. Um, just the third time, so obviously we being hard on ourselves and trying to fix the minor, um, the fu- the minor, you know, minor yeah, twitches, minus, just yeah, the, yeah, 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 just, just, know, just keep, fluff, it, keep just it going, to keep yeah. it going, yeah, and yeah, man, so that this season can be a big season for us. Yeah, it's fantastic to see. Eh? So you had a good uh, good heat out. Um, obviously, we're playing the URC starting in, in two weeks um, up in Ellis Park. I saw you uh, being captain for the last 20 minutes. Hey. Hey, the leadership yeah. is building. Yeah. 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 Don't okay. judge the book by its cover. I've never uh, did that, Okay, sir. yes, yes. Okay. Feeling good? Do you think yeah, the leadership no, is, is growing? Yeah, definitely. Mm. I think yeah. I think Dobbo saw something in me mm. and I saw something in myself. Mm. So I picked, <laughs> picked up picked my up. hand. <laughs> I'm here, sir. I'm ready <laughs> to go. Picked up my hand. Mm. Um, came with those cliches, the quotes. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, and Dom was impressed mm. and he made me captain. Yeah, I saw, I nice. saw. Yeah. It, was, nice. it was actually, it was weird because I, you know, obviously told myself one day when I'm captain, these are the things I want to say mm. to the team, to the players, you know, to everyone. So I obviously create these notes, yeah. you know. But it was, I was only captain for like 20 minutes. So Did now there's too many notes. Yeah. <laughs> Short time. <laughs> so now I had to get to the ref and just, you know, just throw everything yeah. at him, you know. No, it's a start. It's uh, a Mr. start. Mr. If I'm happy with that tackle. Mr. Yeah. If I'm happy with that. Yeah. Mr. If I'm okay. <laughs> Mr. If. And the guy was getting annoyed, you know. But mm. yeah, man, yeah, it's a good, good start. Good start. Hopefully yeah. that will be mm. the future captain of the mm. Storm. Yeah, yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. Everything starts yet behind the rack, partner. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything yeah. starts yet behind surely. the rack. Slowly but surely, yeah. <laughs> okay. Achiva, I think from my side, brother, mm. welcome to our show. Um, obviously, we were really excited once mm. uh, my partner told me that, that you're going to be on the show, obviously, as a young I don't want to say superstar because I can actually see you. Don't want to like, but as a youngster in South African rugby, having him on a show and for the viewer to get to know the player or the person behind mm. the player, mm. I think that is obviously important. Um, and I think my my first question to you probably is, or the first thing that we're going to chat about is, share with us where does Achiva, where were you born, the journey, um, the foundation of your life. Give us a bit of of, of feedback and, and a background on that, please, man. 
Yeah, man. Uh, thank you for having me here. And um, Juba's been mm-hmm. facing me out. <laughs> Even in gym. Behind the rack. Behind the rack. Come on, boy. Behind the rack. Come on. One, one appearance. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I see Juba. Eventually I'm here. But mm. I'm actually glad to be here. Mm. Um, this is special. Yeah, man. I'm from Cape Town. Born in a place, uh, a, settlement, a settlement called Joe Slovo. Um, yeah, so grew up in Joe Slovo. Moved a couple of times from Joe Slovo. Moved to to Tanun, um, more more north, Parklands, past Parklands, Bloberg side, so settlement that side. From Danoon, I moved to Brooklyn, Brooklyn, Maitland, Rugby, went to school, Easterplatz in, um, in, uh, yeah, in Joburg, and in Cape Town, sorry. And then from there, you know, my mom felt like it was time, eh, because of mm. the crime and everything that was happening in Cape Town. She lost her job and, Things were just getting tougher and tougher. We got kicked out of the house, looking for a place to stay. We had to hustle, we had to work. You know, from I was like, what, 10, 11? And I had to behave like a 19-year-old, yeah. you know, and hustle. You know, so yeah, man. And then my mom sent me away to go live with my grandmother. And from there, you know, I thought things were going to be very easy because, you know, Decembers are always nice mm. when you go visit your grandmother. But now I had to stay during the tough times, you know, Jan, Feb, March, and got there. Things were tough. She's a domestic worker. And yeah, man, went moved around different schools. Um, and from there, things got so tough. My granny saw potential in me, saw that I could speak English, thought I was mm. educated yeah. because she felt like, yes, this guy is speaking English. <laughs> you know, and she didn't understand anything. So she mm. said, listen, don't waste your talent here, man. Just go yeah. just go to Joburg. And yeah, man, hiked to Joburg. Um, yeah, remember it was like 250 rand, 150, 250 rand. I don't even remember, but that was, that, that was that the cash I had got from my grandmother from the grant because I was on government grant at the time. And found myself in Joburg. Coincidence, the mm. people that gave me a lift actually stay in the same area as my father. Sure. And then from there, that's that's how I end up in Joburg. Yeah. Jeez. That's <laughs> funny, eh? Intense, yeah. Flip. And, and I, I, did that make you a strong young man? Obviously, you said you had to grow up rather quickly. Did that make you strong and determined from a young age? Yeah, man, I think for me, it, it took away my childhood, mm. but it, it prepared me for the world, you know. I think you can look at it, depends how you want to look at it, from what perspective, perspective you want to look at it. Um, from from now, I feel like if I didn't grow up very early, I wouldn't be where I am now. Mm. I had yeah, to mature. Yeah. But at the same time, me maybe in future have, wanting to have kids, I wouldn't want my kids to go through that. I want mm. my kids to have a childhood. So yeah, I was my childhood was taken away. But yeah, it depends on what side of the fence you're sitting at. Exactly, but I think yeah. I had to get, a, I had to grow up, get a thick skin, and you no know, fake it till you make it. Yeah, yes. you know, every time you enter in the room, you know, mm. you, you, you have an empty stomach, you have nothing, but you have to pretend. You know, you also have to act like you belong in that room. You also have to overdo, mm. overcompensate. You know, even rugby, you have to be the best. You know, when you're talented, then you're the best guy on the field. No one, everyone likes you, you know, mm. that no one cares where you come from. No one cares how you look. Yeah. And that was, that was my strategy. You know, I felt like I had to be the class clown in, in the, at school, school, you know, make everyone laugh and everyone loved me, you know, yeah. I had to be the hustler, sell, be, sell everything to, to, to everyone. And I had the solution. People like, oh, she was the plug, you know. So <laughs> mm. it, for me, it was, it was, it was, it was, it forced me to become this version of myself where, I was forced to 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 grow to, up, to grow up and mm. mature, and I'm here now. Yeah, but it's amazing, man. It's 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 a good learning curve, man. We all have to go through it. I mean, people don't know it because I also when I, when I was before I was 18 years old, I also had three to four jobs. You had to grow up early yeah. to um, because you, all of us got a vision and you all f- focusing towards the, that vision. But you from a rugby player growing up from that, how did you get to rugby? Because obviously you probably had shock and all those things. And then yeah. how did you get to the Lions at the end of the day? Yeah, for me personally, I think I played I played soccer. I love soccer. Cape mm. Town, where I'm from, soccer was the you know the sport. You know, we felt like rugby was for you know the rich schools and stuff. We just played soccer um, in Mongleton. And then what happened was when I was 
2007 World Cup. I remember we're living in this one bedroom house. And so I can remember it's the gate. Yeah. As you walk in the gate, main gate, and there's a room on the right. So it's just rooms. So it's like five bedroom house, but people stay in the rooms. Mm. Okay. So you rent out a room. And then just turn. There was my mom. We used to stay in this room. And then there was like a hang, um passage. Yes. Down the road that goes outside. And she, every time I used to go to the shop, I used to go through the passage mm. and go. But now we're watching the, the World Cup, the 2007 World Cup. Yeah. And I just remember Brian Abana. So mm. my mom's like, oh, <laughs> go buy, you know, our cigarettes. And, yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah. I was like, oh, mom, I'm watching the soccer. And that time it was SABC. So it was still yeah, yeah. air very late. Mm, yeah. So I was like, you know, the game is done. Yeah, but everyone we all, knows what's happening. Yeah, 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 we don't know. <laughs> yeah. We're watching it at nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, so I'm like, like mom, we have to watch. You know, we're never gonna get this opportunity because you can't rewind and stuff in our TVs mm. at the time. So literally, my mom's like, okay, go, go, go quickly. It's 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 half time. It's half time. Yeah. So now I have to run to the to like the. Pakistani um, store yes, and yeah. we run quickly. <laughs> we call him bye. Mm, yeah. And we run, 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 get there. And I've obviously before that, I think Brian Abana had an interception. Yeah, because I was a teenager. Yeah, mm, called yeah. an interception. And that interception was just in my head. It was so cool mm. because when he, scored, when he caught the interception, he dove. Yes. And he was just sliding. And that was like, for me as a soccer player, that was the coolest thing mm. ever. You know, like your yeah, rugby. Yeah, yeah. You know, as a kid, it's, rugby makes you dive. You know, that's yes. in order for you to score, you have to dive. Yeah. So I remember coming back with the cigarettes and bread and in the passage, the door was open. Ran Diving. and onto my mom's bed. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and it was like, that was the moment for me. And my mom saw how happy I was. And yeah. then every time she'll use that to say, he's like, go buy something. You uh, can come back and dive on the like bed. <laughs> yeah. And when I went to Craddock, they had rugby and they asked me what position do you play? And I said, Habana. Uh, you know? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And they're like, okay, we know what position that is. I didn't know the position. Yes, and then yeah. they moved me to the wing. Yeah. And I was the most confused person ever. I was standing there. I didn't know what to do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Knock the balls, huh? Was it knock the balls or not? Yeah, huh? they, they, when they kick a high boy, let it bounce to his dead. <laughs> <laughs> let the and ball bounce, yeah. bounce, but you pick it up and you drift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they, the guys come this way, turn around, go the opposite way. Yeah, man. And yeah. then from there, obviously, when after hiking to Joburg, Went to school there. I started mm. playing rugby. And because I was the mm. tallest and the quickest, mm. you know, it was like, it was, like, it was, it was something. It, 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 ben- it was a benefit for me, you know what I'm saying? And the coach picked that up. Mm. So when the moment I picked up that I was so quick, you know, I'd catch the ball and run and guys couldn't catch me. And, you know, I started getting scholarships, moving. And then eventually played for this um, uh, presidential 15 team. It waits mm. for all the small schools yes. that can't make... Uh, Cravenry, Grand Como, and all this yeah, stuff. Yeah. And they will never get an opportunity. So I played for those, me and my Dodge Tamwe. And that's where my, my life just changed. You know, I got a scholarship to go to JP Boys. And from JP Boys, I played uh, Grand Como, SA Under 16, SA yes. uh, uh, mm. Commonwealth Game Juniors, SA Schools, Craven Week. Um, and got a junior contract at the Lions, and everything just. Kickstarted for so everything yeah. happened rather quickly after you Ooh. played for that team that was yeah for the- it's and for me that's why I always say like opportunity is everything I feel like if mm. I never got an opportunity to play for that team the platform to showcase my talent you know and I was just playing in a small school playing a normal fixture I wouldn't have gotten that opportunity mm. you know it just took one person noticing me and it's like listen come and play and it was Joey Mang- Mangalo yeah yeah, 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 yeah. he's a, he was our coach. That's how life yes, works. That's a, a flip yeah. of one story, moment, eh? one opportunity. Uh. And obviously, myself, I know Joe really well, so that is a really, really cool mm. story. Um, especially with with playing, I didn't play for a similar team, but under eighteen, the Lions also as you know with the St. Stetians Weeks. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. got the Invitational Lions yes, team. Yes. I was fortunate to play for that yes. team as well. And after that, I eventually went on to to represent the Lions at mm. Craven Week. So that, that opportunities that, that those teams create is flipping awesome, especially for kids that need it. Yeah, no, definitely. I feel like in order to grow, especially like sports in the townships and stuff, you know, if the first problem is, is, is viewership. Because mm. how, how can kids watch rugby? Because I remember with me, the only reason I watched was on the World Cup. But the yeah, World Cup yeah. only, it's only every four, four years. years yeah. mm. And now you tell me kids don't watch rugby for four years. You know, and they don't learn anything. Mm. And rugby saved me, saved my life, and saved my family's life, looking after my family. 
So if DSTV, because DSTV is so expensive. Yeah. You know, it's like a thousand rand oh, wow. to watch 201. Mm. And we were all you watching 200 Blitz and soccer. Yes. So mm. you, the people that can't afford the subsidy, you know, with DSTV for people that can't afford and they, all they watch is soccer because that's mm. the channels they get. Yeah. So I think if the government wants to do anything, they'll have to find a way of yeah. putting rugby, and sports and cricket Make it accessible yes. for the kids so they can see on mm. SABC. Because that's, yes. if you come on TV looking for Popeye's cartoons, you don't see anything. You go next channel, you see sports and you see soccer. Yeah. Mm. And that's why so many kids want to play soccer. Mm. I'm so glad that actually they changed it because they only wanted to do it on Super Sport. And then they said, no, 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 let's get 16 games on, on, on SABC. SABC. Yeah. That was good, um, good to see. Uh. Yeah. But sport, they, by, by uh, for, uh, for, quick, all people, quick, quick. I've spoken to Scott. But it's because the fields in Joburg are so hard. Uh, oh, uh, obviously, uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, because he's a loose forward. Because Scott, no, because uh, uh, uh -huh. he actually told me, listen, yeah, the one day they want to move him to wing is the one he, he chased down Anthony for Monk. Oof, and and monk for Monk. Yeah. Then they tested him on the wing. Huh? You played yeah, a couple of games. Yeah, played on a couple of games on wing. Came on against the Crusaders on wing. Played against the Sharks center. Played against Griqua Center, played against um, Sharks in the wing, played against uh, Super Super Challenge Bulls wing. Mm. Yeah, I've played, I've been in the back yep. line for a while. <laughs> nice. eh? uh, how good are you under that mark? Yeah, so, what, <laughs> so obviously that's the part that he didn't tell me about. So then it's like, yo, you're quick. Mm. You, you, you're so fast. You can step. Oh my mm. gosh, you're so strong. You know, and you will be the best backline player. You know, yeah, yeah. just one season, two seasons, you'll change. I'm mm. like, okay. Okay, no problem. <laughs> then they put me on the wing. Mm. Now it's like, I didn't tell me I have to catch high balls. Yeah. And now it's wings and the strings. So now I have to drop it. Like, oh, yeah. Drop, drop, drop. Now I'm dropping. And now they slow down the ball. And the you rack. Have to move again. Now nice. it's a box kick. And I look again. Like, so no, I don't go up in the air. All I do is just catch it and fall. The, or just create a 50 50. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that. How was yeah. your time with the Lions, actually? I wanted to know. Yeah. Um, because, yeah, because obviously, you know, good times is in Cape Town. You know, Table Mountain. Oh, 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 oh. Cam's very good boys, eh? How was the time with the Lions? Yeah, the man. Movie? Lions was, was, uh, it was good. It gave mm. me an opportunity. I think they saw me at school. Um, I played under 19. I played Super Rugby very early. You know, I was part of the Super Rugby squad mm. after my under 19 season. So I was going well. Came forwards player of the year, Curry Cup. You know, I was doing very well at mm. the Lions. And yeah, man, and then you know how every every sportsman has that one, you know, maybe a coach or someone just doesn't just perception, you know. Mm, and the yeah. thing with me, my my biggest problem in my career was perception. Mm. I think people look at me and they're like, they, when you think loose forward, you don't see me. Mm. Okay. You know, you don't you think loose forward needs to be 115, 108 kgs, has to have big biceps, yeah. and has to give you go forward. So when you think ball carrier, you don't see me. Mm. And then I always say, but Technically, I offer the same thing because if you give a guy 112, 15 kgs the ball and he carries the whole game, and then at the end of the game, you look at meters made. Same. Mm. I've probably made more, more meters in a, different, than, way, yeah. in a mm. different way. And the outcome's different, you know, mm. and, and I've contributed more to the game. But perception, and I think ball carry, the oldest thing, someone has to go into collision, has to, you know, it needs to be impact. It needs mm. to, and I'm like, but, and that was the biggest problem with me. It's always, you know, too small. Or and because of my size, it'd be like, oh, you listen, yeah. I, I don't know about, it. I don't know how it will deal with. It's gonna but, last. Or whatever. Last in the physical more, game, uh, uh, and and now every time I'll like big games, I'll show, I'll come up and you know, man of a match, and yeah, after four or five games, I'll forget, mm. and it's back to, oh, he's mm. not good in the in the tight, you know, mm. tight games. He shies away. He's always in the edges. Mm. And the one thing about me, I identify space. So if the space in the edges, I go to the edges. If the mm. space in the middle, I go to the middle. Yeah. So if there's no spaces in the tight game because it's raining, why must I? Why must I go there? Yeah. You know. It's, so I read the game, but yeah. So that the lines had happened, and then one of the coaches, you know, I won't say his name, and then mm. he forwards coach. He just never played me again. Yeah. It's like four or five youngsters, and I was also very young. This came up like still on top young. of me. Yeah. You are yeah. still very young. Actually. And then, <laughs> and then they just, yeah, put me down. Eh? They mm. put me down. Uh, and I just, you know, I, started getting in, I got an injury because I was trying to train hard and I was trying to, you know, show that, listen, I'm the guy. I was over training. I was doing extras because I was like, why am I what not playing? More? What more? You know, and I started getting injured. And yeah, man, my career I could see that, this, listen, 
it's nothing's gonna happen. And then mm. COVID hit, and after COVID, you know, it's it started being clear that listen, I'm never ever gonna play again. And yeah. after COVID, I was looking for a contract, and I couldn't get a contract. Really? Yeah, I struggled to get a contract. Mm. I couldn't. No team wanted me. It was the mm. craziest thing because I went from every team wanting me to no you team wanting me. Mm. And it was just like, okay, cool. And I was begging my agent and I left this agent to another agent and because now everyone's promised me, no, no. Then when I show my clips, it's like, yeah. oh, bro, it's an old clip. It's two years ago. Yeah. Where's your <laughs> clip from last stuff, year? Yeah. <laughs> Where's your clip stuff. from last year? And I'm like, oh, well, I didn't play last year. They're like, mm. oh, that's the problem. And no team wanted me, mm. you know, and... That was a wake up call, eh? And then you know, I got a new agent and spoke to him. I was like, "Listen, please hook me up." But you know, anyway, I'm willing to go anywhere. Mm. Just know? an opportunity again. Yeah, and I was willing to go anywhere, you know, just to play. And took a massive pay cut, a massive pay cut mm-hmm. from because you must remember I was these young guys who yeah. were playing very early, and mm. I was earning and stuff. And I took a massive pay cut yeah, from 15 to 12. Million. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this guy. <laughs> okay. uh, are you talking yeah. Naira or are you talking some dollars? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man. And a massive pay cut. And, you know, because of COVID, my life just changed. And mm. COVID taught me something because I was injured in COVID. Is that how my life would be after rugby? Because I was chilling in bed. I was still getting a salary, mm. but I had nothing to do. I no couldn't purpose. do nothing. No purpose. Yeah. I wake up, make calls, go see friends. People are working. People aren't working online at home. You know, everyone's on Zoom calls and stuff. Mm, and yeah. I realized I don't, actually don't have a plan after rugby. If this salary gets taken away, I'm it's gone. Scary, yeah. And that's when that bubble burst, you know. And I realized that, listen, rugby is not everything. It's everything, yes. It means to an end. It looks after my family, but yeah. there's life after it. And after when I spoke to my agent, I was, the new agent, I was like, listen, please hook me up. Got me, got the call, phone call. After training at the Lions, I was chilling in the track at um, Joburg Stadium yes. track. Mm. And then um, phone rang John Dobson, spoke to him. Uh. And he told me, he's like, listen, uh, we don't have space for you. Um, we, we, we've we reached our budget, you know, players, because we're under administration, we can't sign yeah. guys. And I begged them, I'm like, just double, listen, bro. Mm. I'm willing to take a pay cut, mm. just come. And he's like, okay, we can bring you on a loan, but that's it's up to you. you yes. know? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Bro, I just need an opportunity. Mm. I know what I'm capable of. Just give me an opportunity. And then, yeah, man, took a pay cut, came to Cape Town. It was tough. Got injured first game. And that's what I said. Yeah, I know. I think this is me, eh? I think. Cape Town is the yeah. one. No, I thought this is my oh, really? rugby yeah. career is done because yeah. injury, injury, no contract, too loan. And then I got injured first game against the Sharks. And I'm like, you know, and then Double just looks at me and he's like, Mm. Gave you opportunity, you know, not taking but, it. Uh. And then I literally forced it, and I said, "No, I'm not opting. I'm not gonna do an operation. I'm gonna do, you know, I'm a Nigerian. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I so, remember that. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. Went to the playoffs. Yeah, and mm-hmm. I just went with the with the torn grade three MCL. Kicked it there. Eh? Kept yes, going. Played with it. <laughs> and, yeah. then, and I was, and I'm a stepper. Now every time I step, that knee does the stanky leg. <laughs> <laughs> does the daggy. <laughs> it does the daggy. So yeah, man. And then I eventually, yeah, my career, then everything just switched there. Eh? Everything mm. started working. You know, after the op, I did the, eventually I did the op and then my career started picking up because mm. Dobbo, Darby, Rita started backing me, you know, and yeah. you know, that's that's all I needed, you know. Yeah, at the first day of the storm was, was it, eh? Yeah. It's an yeah, incredible yeah. season as well, yeah. Sure, yo, yo, you yo, guys were on fire. Huh? The stormers were on fire. Yeah. First yep. you are she and yep. Finally, final, the second URC, and he was clinical in both of them, eh? Yeah, yeah no, it That's why he celebrated fantastic. for seven days. Huh? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, take us through that quickly. Huh? That's why, uh, <laughs> folks, he celebrated <laughs> seven days. I don't when know how long Juba yeah. celebrated, but No, no, I no, know. no, two, oh, two days, eh? Two days. Yeah, two days okay. is enough for me. <laughs> take us yeah, through man, I winning think the URC, first of all, and life after, the chapter after that. But you must remember, like, I'm from Cape Town. Mm. Where I'm from in Cape Town, Joe Slovo, probably... The chances of you making it out in Joe Slovo, mm. it's like 0.2%. And making it out would be you maybe getting a scholarship to NASFIS, studying and then working a basic job. Mm. And that's making you out. It's like very, I don't think there's any millionaires that comes out or anyone that has a good job that comes out there. So for me, being in the URC finals, like the biggest thing ever, you know. And people yeah. always say, um, just don't judge me by my success. Judge me by the depth I started from. 
Sure. Mm. No, but that's 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 how I judge success. Because mm. people look at me now and they're like, "Oh yeah, he's just a stormers player. Mm. Uh, there's still box. There's still world player." There. For me, me being a stormers player, is, it's like the biggest thing yeah. that my family will ever exactly, go to. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's like I'm, you know, I'm the pinnacle. I made it. Yeah, yeah, I'm like pinnacle, pinnacle because of the, of the depth I started from. Exactly. Yeah. No, I'm I'm a government grant baby. If you, if you mm. don't mind, I'm gonna steal that little Not part. No problem, and keep man. It to myself. Huh? Oh, For Instagram. Yeah. Oh yeah, twenty percent twenty over here. That's yeah, okay. and 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 that's me. I feel like mm. you know I'm I'm the schools I went to. That when I look at the places where I stayed, you know, the shacks and stuff, I'm, I feel like. I'm very, very, I've done well for myself, mm. you know. And uh, yeah, you get those people it. on social media that tell me I'm useless. Whatever. It doesn't bother me because mm. I know how far I've come, you know. Mm. And so now UFC final for me was that thing of you have the whole world watching this final and everyone's commenting about it. Mm. And you start thinking to yourself like, and everyone's like, yeah, I know uh, Bulls are going to win their turn. So they're mentioning all these loose forwards and no one's mentioning my name. Mm. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, it's, it is what it is. And now I have my family that I've came from all over Eastern Cape. They're watching the game. My mom's coming to watch the game. And the moment we won it, it and then I saw these kids standing there and I realized, and I saw this one kid like was so excited just to give a medal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that yeah, was I a big it. moment for him, mm. you know, in his life. And I was thinking to myself, I don't know where this kid come from. He could have probably come from a situation where he never in his life would have thought he would be giving someone a medal. This yeah. is a highlight of his life. And this is my highlight of my life. So I want to go back to all the places I said, poor me, mm. and say, please pour me a drink. Yeah. Hey. I remember that quote. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was <laughs> okay. my vibe, poor man. Me. Poor me. <laughs> yeah, poor so, me a drink. Yeah, so I went to yeah. every single place where I had sad moments. No, mm. I, I used to work um paving company in, in ESC. It's like um outside... There's a place, as you go on Greenpoint, it's like a, it was a, it's an area there in Greenpoint. Mm. I used to work there paving and, and after school, you know. I thought to myself, listen, I'm going to party in Greenpoint. All the places where I had bad memories when I was in the back of a bucket, yeah. going, going back, back to yeah. Maitland, mm. Brooklyn. Yes. I'm going to celebrate, go to Joe Slovo, celebrate, show them that it's possible. So I went, obviously I've been sad many times, so... It won't take one day, two day. Yeah, yeah. Two, yeah. It's a seven day. It's a seven day bender. You know what I'm saying? It's a so seven day bender. You get it. Get you. you get it. So <laughs> yeah, it. man. And no, it's good but I didn't make it to seven days. I made it to like. <laughs> <laughs> He's a cool to this guy. <laughs> I didn't make it to seven days. I made it to like day five and a half. <laughs> <laughs> My no, liver no. was failing. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, please, please. The health comes first. The health comes first. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, so there's a lot that. of action around you, man. Yeah, yeah. Huh? A lot of action. Seven days of celebrating the high five against Jakub, uh, Jakub Paper. Oh, mm. yeah, 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 yeah. Do you remember that? Eh? That was actually cool. Yeah, I mean, I, so it was, <laughs> what game was it? I think it was against it was Cheetahs. Against Cheetahs, yeah. Yeah, It was the last minute you took yeah. the last penalty, so the scrum penalty. We, 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 so actually, at school, I always wondered. So every time you score a long distance try, yeah. the ref will come next to you and then like blow. Yeah. <laughs> And his hands up. Find that clip, eh? And I'm like so tempted. I'm like, you know, what would, what would happen if I if I do this? You know, you know, it was my intuitive thought. I'm thinking to myself, what did he mm. the penalty around? And then yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking. And then now, oh, against Yaku Paper, mm. penalties. Obviously, we win that scrum to win the game, and he blows. And I'm like, bro, the game is over. Yeah. That's so obviously, I went to him, and I'm like, high five. And he head up. He looks at me. And I went straight to him. And I was like, thanks, yeah. sir. <laughs> his head and, like, I, and he put his <laughs> head down. And then, yeah, that video went viral. It was like over like 30 million yes. views, bro. Yeah. So it was crazy. And at that, the offload as well. You know, you're Dylan Lates with the offload yes, at yes, Newlands. Yes, 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 yes. And yes. then we've got the offload at DHL Stadium, the same yeah, that thing. That was nuts. Oh, naughty, naughty. You know, you know, made for the big time. Uh, he Why likes the big time. <laughs> it's called the Razzle Dazzle. He I likes the Razzle Dazzle. Oh, yeah, man. that offload was, and things that I've done at offload so many times. Yeah. And to training, pull it off and, in a game. and that massive moment, game. it was massive game. But it's like for me, it was personal. People were like, "Yeah, are you taking a gamble? It's 50-50. It's not a fifty-fifty. Mm. We've done so many times. Yeah. Mm. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, I, that's yeah. how comfortable I was in doing it because I've done it so many times. It will. It's just like a normal pass, mm. you know. And yeah, man, it, it's if you start from nothing, you have nothing to lose. Nothing to lose, yes. hey. Huh? Just this is for awesome, yeah. Yo, fantastic, fantastic. Archie, just quickly, um, you spoke about life after rugby as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and what is plans, life after, what are you busy with? 
I know you've got like Hibachi, Hayachi. Hey, what talk me? Hibachi, Hibachi. This guy's fashion, eh? Yeah, but I man. can see. I yeah, can see. Yeah, there's the on a fa- <laughs> uh, fashion channel. Uh, huh? I see him running up and down and walking, you know, walking around. Nah, yeah. nah. I'm, fashion I'm not, is... Huh? Nah, nah, nah. So there, man, I have obviously a, a sneaker, sneaker brand mm-hmm. called Hibachi. So we locally manu- manufa- manufactured in South Africa. Mm-hmm. So we make our shoes in South Africa. Everything of ours is from South Africa, our brands from South Africa, so, but the name's not South African. So hibachi is like a hibachi stove. So oh. it was inspired by um, the Japanese World Cup because yes. when you make um, food in Japan, they make on the hibachi stove. Mm. And hibachi, is, it's a hot device, something that's hot, something that can't, you can't put your hands on it. Mm. It's like it's so hot. So after the, the Springboks won the World Cup, you know, that, that's when the whole inspiration came from. Uh-huh. That Listen, I'm going to take a name from, from Japan and create it and make it ours because we own that World Cup. Okay. And that's how the concept came about. Yeah. Yeah, so I... And where can you find this Hibachi? Yeah, we, we are online, www.hibachi.com. And Instagram, Hibachi. If you go to my Instagram, mm. you'll see on the bio, Hibachi. Um, and yeah, man, Life of the Rugby, I think... Um, for me personally, um, I've I've seen I start okay I started from nothing, and it's very easy to f- fall into this loop of, yeah, yeah, of yeah. rugby where you everything gets given to you. You know you wake up in the cycle of you playing, getting paid, mm. playing, living. Everyone's praising you, and you never think it's gonna end. Mm. You know, and no, for, it's, yeah, it's, man, for me it's like it's crucial. I I. Rugby is it's, it's what I do. Mm. It's not who I am. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? And mm. I have a life outside of rugby mm. and a personality outside of rugby. Mm. You know, that's why people that watch rugby, they look at me now and they look at me like an idiot. They're like, mm. bro, you know, what is what's this guy what is dressed it? like? Why is this guy like this? But then they don't understand that I have a life outside of this rugby. Yeah, world, yes, you yes. Know? So they're looking at me as a rugby at, with a conservative mindset of rugby. Like a okay. rugby player is supposed to behave like this. Yes. A rugby player is supposed to speak like this. Yeah, a rugby yeah, yeah. player is supposed to, yeah, you, you know, do you, yeah, your you interviews are need to be like this. You know, if you're too flashy or you're too colorful, you're arrogant. Mm. You know, if you're too loud, it's, it's you know, and I'm not about that life. Mm. I feel like personally, because I had nothing growing up, my family relies on me and I look after a lot of family members. Mm. I have 11 siblings, you know, and everyone relies on me. My mm. aunts, my uncles, everyone relies on me. So, for me to be short-sighted and think that just rugby things and I look after me until I'm 60, my kids. Because you look at it from this perspective. Two 19-year-old kids. One plays rugby, one doesn't. 19, at 19, the one kid goes to varsity. At other 19, the kid's getting a contract. Yes. Then his salary just keeps going up. Mm. At 25, this kid is graduate. He's living a kid. Yeah, he's, he's, he's 23, 24. And everyone's like, oh, no, he's in varsity. So it's a normal yeah, mentality. Yeah, mm. He's in varsity in varsity. When you go to 28, 29... Now he's at job, he has job ex- work experience. Yeah, he's, he's getting his, his first house. Ho- yeah, his mm. first house, his first car, small, small apartment, a pet. You now at your pinnacle of your career. You have a family, you have everything. So it. now that graph starts going down. You're on the other side of the pyramid. Yeah, yeah after 30, down. you start going down. Now whatever you've c- accumulated, you had to live, you had to look after your family, and you had to save. Mm. It's impossible. It's impossible, honestly. It's very impossible for you to do all three of those things because you must remember, once you start making money, you want to move out of Kailicha. Yeah. And you want to go live in a safe place. You want to take your kids to a best school. So you are going to spend a lot of money, you know? So yeah. for the best type of education. So now this small kid who was your same age as you who wasn't playing rugby, at 30 he's, now, he's getting job experience, he's getting promotions. You're now dipping. You have no degree. Even if you have a degree, you don't have work experience. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be earning 50, 80, 90,000 rand. You're going to move to earning 12,000 rand. So it's a waste of time. Imagine mm-hmm. earning so much That's money tough. and you have a degree, go and work. Now you're like nine grand salary because you're start. And it's like you're earning 90 grand. You can't even look after your petrol mm-hmm. and your insurance. Yeah, so it's a yeah. waste of time for you. So now, after that, this kid... You retire at 35, he's now hitting the pinnacle, he's starting crying. a family, starting everything. Now he can live until 60. I call that forever money. Mm. So at 60, <laughs> because, and it's forever, forever because, money. It's forever money because <laughs> as long as he keeps waking up, mm. he's going to get paid. Yeah. And then he gets pension after 60. He can, he'll be fine as long as he mm. keeps working. You have to, whatever you save in that short period, needs to look after you from 35. 35. 
to 60 and your kids and everybody yeah, else that finished, realize you. Finished. Bro, by the yeah. time you retire, your pension fund will kicking for two years and it's done. Mm. Because your lifestyle is really too high. And it's very hard to dip on that lifestyle because you don't want to be moving back to, to Durbanville Township or mm. Kailicha Township because you now to... you... Because you're used to a certain life and your kids are used to a certain life. Mm. So for me, what I'm trying to... I'm a realist. I know that this money that we're making rugby seems like a lot. We're making CEO type of money. Mm. But it's not a lot, bro. Not forever, yeah. It's not forever. Massive, so at mm. 32, 34, there's something else needs to kick in. There needs to be like, and that's why I push, I'm doing hibachi, I'm doing also other stuff that obviously I can't say on the podcast. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. And, and no, I'm, I'm hustling, yes. man. Yeah. And no, that's what I'm important. doing. It's very important, yeah. It's a massive learning curve. This, especially for the Actually, youngsters. what is said now, partner, sorry to interrupt mm. you. Um, I think that is... That is the conversation we have to have with kids, the young boys. Yeah. Mm. The, 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 the reality mm. of the industry, the yes. reality of the finance side. Yes. Um, yeah, we'll have an episode for that. Yeah, we to, sh we that, should. Mm, no, and also, the, sorry, man. Also, mm. personally for me, it's the biggest culprit. It's the agents. Mm. Hey, the agents are the biggest culprits to kids. And especially, I, I'm, I'm, I'm even going to be, sorry if I'm, you guys can edit this part if you don't like <laughs> it. <laughs> um, the agents are the biggest snakes. In, in, in mm. a lot of right, especially if you come like a black child yes. coming from nothing, mm. you become the first generation of sal um, earning a salary. So your parents, you tell your parents what to do. In black communities, if you start earning a salary, you're the man. Mm. You know, your family listens to you now because you're the contributor. No one tells you no. So now you get into a space where you're young, you make stupid decisions. No one tells you anything. You start making stupid financial decisions because you're young. Yes. And then your agent, because he doesn't want to lose his job, he's just telling you, yeah, 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 do that, we'll get you another contract. And then when shit hits the fan, what happens? Mm. You don't have a job. Leave alone. He leaves you alone next, onto your next on. client. Mm. And they start colluding with, with, with other unions and speaking to the unions and they're like, yeah, no, no, I'll make him sign, don't worry. And then now you sign, he's like, yeah, this is the best offer. And because you, you think, yeah, this guy has the best interest of, my, of heart, let me sign with him. And that becomes a problem. And on top of it, they start giving you financial financial advisors. A financial advisor is someone that sells you services, products. Mm. He gets kickbacks. You need a financial plan and someone that's going to go to your bank statement and say, listen, you're okay. spending too mm. much on Uber XYZ. Eats. This is, if you cut out on this and this and put this in this account, this is actually what's going to be happening. You spend, how much is your car um, per month? Actually, why don't you just drop your thing? You don't need this. Like, that's what you need as a rugby yeah. player. Not a financial advisor that's going to tell you about a stainless or whatever long term investment account that you're only going to see at 60 when you're retiring at 30. So, what's mm. going to happen for 30 years? Mm. Yes. So, that's yes. the type of conversations that we're supposed to be having with a lot of kids. And, you, and it's very hard to tell a kid that's. Just, Leave the GTI. Yeah. And then, uh. and then, and, and then they're playing, <laughs> they're playing uh, in front of. Uh, 30, 30 40,000 40, people and the people are like, oh, you're the best, you're the best and you're like, Tim, hey man, calm down your finance. He's not going to listen to you. Yeah. 80,000 people, you must count with the test. To no, he doesn't <laughs> want that. He wants a lifestyle, Humble bro. Humble yeah. polo. Yeah, he wants a lifestyle. So that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's where I'm at, bro. And mm. I'm not perfect. I spend, I live, bro, because I feel like I worked hard for it. Yes. But on top of that, I'm a realist. I know that rugby pays me for my service. And as long as I give the best type of service, I'll get paid for it. Mm. The moment my service is not up to par, I won't get paid for it. So I'm real. No emotions attached. I'm mm. on to the next. If John is Dobson tomorrow is like, uh, listen, Achieve, you're not performing, I'm out, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's, I'll the, go the, reality and, that's the reality. And that's, mm. where we, that's how we need to look at it. That mm. supporters support the team. You are there to, for a service yeah. and you get paid for that service. And then the moment you're not performing, you need to leave and someone else will come. It's like this guys who up. think, guys that walk into a room and then they want to be recognized or want people to be like, okay, that's an autograph. That thing's going to end, bro. You're just going to depress yourself after mm. because you're chasing this instant valid, um, validation, validation where people come to you and be like, oh, hey, you're the, this guy mm. and you like that. Yeah, 30, 40. I know some rugby players that walk in the room and they look around and the kids don't know who he is, bro. He was a legend to, in, in, mm. in, in a lot. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Mm. The kids don't know who he is. Kids are looking at the new... The Sasha Gomez Zulus and stuff, yes, you know? Yeah, and, and, yeah, and mm. they're looking at the TikTok guys who step on TikTok. Mm. You're nobody, bro. Mm. And all your life, that's what, that was your life. And that's what depresses a lot of people. So I don't say, listen, it's just a service. I'm here to produce a service and that's that. Yeah, unique mindset, eh? He's like calling that. a spade a spade. He's, huh? cutting, He's cutting to the bone, eh? Yes, 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 sir. Um, <laughs> but I love his mindset, partner. Mm, yeah. I think um, 
sometimes I told him actually before we started the show that um, we, we get lost sometimes in reality, mm. especially once you're in that rugby bubble. Yeah. And what I, what I kind of find really cool is that, that he understands reality and understands the difference between reality and rugby, yeah. which, which I really like mm. and appreciate. Mm. Um, 100%, yeah. Yes, this is awesome to see. Huh? I don't get these stuff at the HPC. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> you don't even get discount on the Bachi shoes. Eh? Uh, still have, business uh? is business, but you must remember, <laughs> when you go to Woolworths, you don't say to them, Hey, I'm John De Jong. Can you please give me 50%? Five <laughs> no, they don't. Business is business, bro. It's like, yeah. that's how it works, bro. And yeah. also the same thing as your, your Stormers jersey or whatever jerseys you have. It's yeah. not going to pay your kids bill, bro. Hey. Mm. You know, when you're done, you're going to rock up there and be like, listen, I'm John De Jong, the Springbok legend. They'll be like, oh, nice to meet you. Please sign here. Yeah? Yeah. And like, okay, cool. So the school fee cost and they'll give you the price at the yeah. end. But it's not going to pay. <laughs> the bank doesn't recognize us jerseys. <laughs> and I was like, so you need to be real with yourself, yeah, Jomar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's I living like in it. a different level, eh? his mindset. Eh? <laughs> huh? We I need an episode, a, a proper episode just for himself. Oh, in the wow. future. Huh? Wow. Episode 2030, so he can go deeper and deeper and deeper. Because he's already deep. Exactly. Hmm? He came deep. Exactly. Huh? No, John awesome. De Jong asked me not to be controversial. So <laughs> really? Let me get down. Well done. Well done. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you from outside and behind the rack. I just want to say thank you very much for coming out, my man. And yo, that was a mouthful. Uh, we covered a lot of things. Yeah. I um, think um, from my side and I think the viewer side, they, mm. they probably... Um, with no who he is, mm. but making him tick is, is obviously his foundation where he comes from. I think every house needs a strong foundation. And that's what I got from this conversation. That him as a human being, his foundation is strong yeah. and doesn't matter the wind, the rain, whatever is going to do nothing to his house. Which for, I think, viewers, that's what I got. I hope you guys got yeah. the same thing. <laughs> and, and that is cool. I think uh. that, that is what I take from today. And thank you for that, brother. Mm. Thanks yeah, for coming man. out, man. Thank really you very much for it, having yeah. me, guys. I need to sort you guys with some hibachis. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we can wait on the out. next episode, eh? Huh? Yeah, got See you, man. Is this episode sponsor? Apache, the next episode sponsor. Yes. Got you. Huh? I got you. Uh, I got some of the future. Thanks for, for, for tuning in, eh? Thank you yeah. very much, man. Shot. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Our viewers, our, what do you call it? Arrakis? The Arrakis. The Arrakis. Wow, we, we, we keep feeding them with stuff, different type of stuff, different type of vibe and interview and mindset. Yeah, that was, I think for us, the two of us behind the rack, that was the first um, interview actually where, where we got stuck into someone's story, mm. the foundation of what makes the human being. Exactly. Why is, um, why is why? Let me put it yeah. like that. Is why. Mm. And once you understand someone's why, everything after that makes sense. Yes, so we have to make it exclusive, huh? Because you're going deeper than the surface. Yeah. Huh? Stuff that we want to know, because obviously there's people out there, especially it's inspiring for the youngsters as well, because a lot of people, sometimes we all think we've got stories. You've got the story, and your story is tough. I've got a story, my story is tough. But if you if you listen to someone else's story, you've got a different perspective yeah. of not only life, but the rugby and everything. No, I think there's a lot of good things that everybody could learn mm -hmm. from the way he spoke about, obviously, since childhood, like the way where he came from to where he is now. Yeah. And what it means to him. You can see what yeah, it means yeah. to he's him. Yeah, yeah, he's passionate about things, yeah. So, and, and the way he looks at life. Yes. That's important. Not rugby. Rugby is part of his life. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, he's still achieve a Graham. Diamani. And we wish him all the best mm, with yes. his future in Davos with what? Mm. Ibachi. Ibachi, yeah, the shoes. Ibachi. I'm still waiting for the discount, but we'll, we'll get there. Um, but yeah, Ibachi, and he's got all other stuff that is, okay. that's involved in, you know, life after rugby. And it's, at the end of the day, a lot of, most of the stuff he's talk about is, is, is straight to the point. He's calling a spade a spade. And it's I love true. that. And it's true. Mm. Um, so guys, thank you for checking out this exclusive interview with I, Shiva Graham Diamani. I'm Rudy Page. I'm Joan Dion. And the rock is clear. clear.